NBC 10 at issue Sunday, May 2nd, 2010. The race for U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania. In the Democratic primary, two candidates, incumbent Senator Arlen Specter and challenger Congressman Joe Sestak. Today, Joe Sestak on NBC 10 at issue. Good morning. I'm Steve Highsmith. In addition to the U.S. Senate race, we will speak with State Auditor General Jack Wagner as well, a candidate for governor. In the Senate race, Democrats decide on May 18th whether Joe Sestak or Arlen Specter should represent them in the November general election. Joe Sestak is a two-term congressman representing Delaware County, parts of Chester and Montgomery counties, and he served 31 years in the U.S. Navy, rising to the rank of three-star admiral. He joins us now. Good to see you again, sir. Thank Good you. Good to see you again, Steve. Arlen Specter, many believe that over the years he's brought home the bacon. They point to the research at NIH, other projects in Pennsylvania, the National Constitution Center. So why not stay with a horse that has brought it home? Look, let's respect Arlen Specter and his service. He has done some good things. But when I ran against Kurt Weldon in my district, and he was 20 years a Republican, they used the same seniority argument. They didn't need seniority. They needed a public servant, someone who was in it for working families. Arlen Specter has voted lockstep with George Bush and Cheney to take us to that tragic war in Iraq. He voted for those devastating tax and economic policies that destroyed our economy. And then they squandered the billions in surpluses President Clinton had given George Bush. I respect our inspector, but I disagree with his Republican agenda and how he advanced his interests. There's a new way to do things. True, and though, those, when he switched to the Democratic Party, he has mostly voted with President Obama, the Democratic Congress, has he not? But why wasn't he standing up to George Bush when the going was tough? Yes, he switched parties to become a Democrat because he said the prospects were bleak to beat Pat Toomey in the Republican primary. I think people here in Pennsylvania want someone who's in it for conviction, someone who's in it because of a core belief, not someone like so many in Washington, D.C. that are just trying, Steve, to hold on to their jobs. Look at the millions of Americans that lost their jobs because of the policies our respective voted for. Respect them, but disagree. They need a warrior, a fighter, and he's lost all his seniority. He's now at the bottom. He has one year seniority of all there, and I'll gain that in one year. It's time to build a new generation of leadership down there. There's a narrative that is either being created or is legitimately, certainly it's legitimate in many people's minds, that Arlen Specter is more reflective of Pennsylvania overall and therefore a stronger candidate in the fall. And there, there are two editorials, one the Daily Pennsylvanian, that's the University of Pennsylvania newspaper, says Representative Joe Sestak, Specter's opponent, has many of the same positions on the issues of Specter. Some students will appreciate that he is more liberal than Specter, who was a Republican until recently. But Specter has always been independent-minded. As Congress is becoming increasingly partisan, it is necessary to have senators who are willing to reach across the aisle and break party ranks. In the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, similar theme. Whoever hopes to become Pennsylvania's next senator will need to win votes from the center. Arlen Specter has a long record of being that kind of vote-getter. You know, in my district, it's 55% Republican. And I only put money into yard signs last year, not any TV commercials. I well work across the aisles. Moderate, moderate when he voted 2,000 times for George Bush's devastating policies, moderate when he actually said to Rick Santorum, if you give me your endorsement, I promise you that I'll give the next two votes to George Bush's next two Supreme Court justices. We find that his independence was won. No, we find he was doing the bidding of the right wing. I respect the man, but I disagree. I think principle has to triumph over politics. No, in the general election against Pat Toomey, I poll significantly better than he does as Pat Toomey's numbers trumpet from 50% down to 33% when I'm placed there in, re in place of Arlen Specter. Arlen Specter in a couple of TV attack ads has said you have been relieved of duty for poor command climate. He says those are not his words, but those of the Navy or Army Times or both. That you don't pay many of your campaign workers even the minimum wage, that you hire your relatives on the campaign, that you missed a lot of votes. He even calls you AWOL, not a direct military <laughs> reference uh, to your service, but nonetheless a military reference. Guilty or not guilty? Oh, not guilty. Look at this. I'm very proud of my military record, but these are the worst kind and the most despicable of false attacks. But our inspector's been doing it since time began. It's something he did when he stood beside George Bush and they destroyed by swift boat tactics John Kerry. It's something where he didn't even speak up when they did it Max Cleland and he lost his limbs in Vietnam. He's doing it and it's understandable. He can't run in a Democratic primary on his Republican record. These ads, Steve, say more though about him. You a think person, he doesn't have the character to be a senator? I think that these things he is bringing forward is so false and so despicable. It says nothing about me. What it does say, though, about him is 
that he's willing to say or do anything, not only switch a party to try to keep his job from the Republican Democrat, but willing to say anything, as he has done against Lynn Haeckel and Joe Hall. But is he making any of this up? Let's take, for example, you, many you do have uh, relatives on the campaign. Oh, my gosh. And you pay them. I'm very proud of my family. I'm very proud of my staff. But you know what they did say at NBC, and they investigated it, said these assertions of his were false. And in fact, over 40% of his own employers make below the minimum wage. Look, this isn't about that. This is about people outside the studio who have lost their jobs here in Philadelphia. They've lost 100,000 jobs in fees. We should be talking but about people, how to get money in order to get back to the first trained. thing, which is the, the relieved of command. If people don't know you well, and they hear words relieved of command, that sounds ominous, and poor command climate, what is your response to those that wonder what kind of leader you would be or manager you would be in the Senate? You know, I was on the ground in Afghanistan as our inspector voted for that tragic war in Iraq. No career politician should ever say anything about a veteran. My last commanding officer, the head admiral of the United States Navy said, I put Joe in the crosshairs because I wanted straight talk. He was courageous in changing the Navy. My public record is my service to this nation for our inspector to try to smear me or any veteran to order to hold on his job is simply the worst form of politics. Steve, Washington has too many people like it. It's why I stood up. I don't care what he says about me. But how about these Pennsylvanians who have been hurt? More with Congressman Joe Sastak with NBC 10 at issue.